Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're taking a look at ASUS's own, well, I suppose official fix, for the troubled Radeon RX 5700 XT Strix graphics card. For those of you unaware, I received this exact model back in October of last year, and I wasn't very impressed with the results. Many other reviewers at the time had claimed really impressive sub 70 degree operating temperatures and super quiet fan speeds. Unfortunately, my retail card wasn't nearly as impressive as all the reviews I'd read. Rather than the 64 to 66 temperatures other media outlets were reporting for the GPU, my card ran at 77 degrees and the fans spun at around 2000 RPM, which isn't terribly loud for this particular model, but given the temperature, it was far from impressive. Initially, this was thought to be a VBIOS issue, but it was later discovered by some savvy users that the screws simply didn't attach the heatsink to the card well enough. Now, the reason this was an issue for our review, and ultimately those who purchased the Strix model, was down to the fact that it was installed and tested inside a computer case, which typically sees the card mounted horizontally. In contrast to that, all the reviews I saw reporting great temperatures happen to use a test bed, and this method seats the card vertically, and that means the one and a half kilo heatsink, which isn't attached to the PCB very well, uh, doesn't pull away nearly as much, if at all. Worse still, three months after my initial review, things had deteriorated, and now the Strix 5700 XT was peaking at 86 degrees, making it nine degrees hotter than what was seen originally. By using screws that didn't apply any pressure to the VRM section of the board, the heatsink eventually dripped away from the PCB as the thermal pads lost their grip. Having discovered all this, I went back and increased the mounting pressure by adding some plastic washers to the four GPU screws, and then replaced the VRM screws with some shorter M.2 screws because that's all I had lying around. This completely solved the thermal issue with my Strix car, dropping the peak operating temperature right down to 64 degrees. So that was a 13 degree drop from the original review and a massive 22 degree drop from what the card was doing after a few months of operation. That video received over 100,000 views in a relatively short period of time, and at this point ASUS could no longer get away with ignoring the problem, a problem which numerous customers had previously tried to get something done about by posting on the official ASUS support forums and retailer websites, but to no avail. The day after my Strix Fix video went live, as you might imagine, ASUS did contact me and they weren't particularly happy with that uh, particular video. We had some back and forth discussion about the issue and I assured them that it was widespread and wasn't limited to my one particular retail card. And it turns out I wasn't wrong. 100% of all Strix cards sold before and shortly after that video was made uh, suffered from the exact same design flaw. Having confirmed the issue with ASUS and making it very clear that we got nothing wrong and that the video would remain as is, they decided to do something about the problem. But it has been a slow process. Though that's not entirely ASUS's fault. A certain virus, which we unfortunately can't talk about, otherwise we'll get demonetized, has stopped ASUS from requiring the screws they need in large enough volumes. So, at this point, Yes, ASUS has acknowledged there is a thermal issue with the Strix 5700 XT, and they will be providing customers with new screws to fix the problem. Before I continue, here is a look at how my 5700 XT Strix card performs with the updated screws. We're now looking at a peak temperature of 72 degrees with a fan speed of 1800 RPM. So that is a big improvement on what the card was doing previously. It's not nearly as good as our fix, but ASUS has deemed our method too dangerous as it applies too much pressure to the GPU die and therefore puts it at risk of cracking, which would destroy the card. So that's fair enough. But a 72 degree peak GPU temperature does mean, despite being the biggest, heaviest, and most expensive 5700 XT graphics card, the Strix model is only a very average performer, which is disappointing. But at least it works now, so there is that. This does bring me to my next issue, and the issue pertains to how ASUS handled this mess. If it wasn't bad enough that they released the Strix series in the condition that they did, and then did nothing about it until some random YouTuber exposed the design flaw, uh, they're now entirely placing the blame on AMD. A very bold move indeed. ASUS claims they followed the AMD design guidelines, which called for the mounting pressure 
to be in the range of 30 to 40 psi. But following user reports of temperature issues, ASUS investigated and through extended research and development testing, found the optimal psi range for their graphics card is 50 to 70 psi without compromising reliability. So rather than admit their mistake, ASUS is attempting to place the blame fully on AMD, which in my opinion is it's just very, very poor form. An outright lie, and as I said earlier, a very bold move. Imagine if they pulled this crap with NVIDIA. There's no way they'd ever dare. Just imagine the green hammer that would come down on them if they did that. No way that just no way they would do that. Anyway, something else you have to wonder is. How is it that all other manufacturers manage to mount their coolers correctly to the Navi die for optimal performance? For example, MSI, Gigabyte, and PowerColor, just to name a few, all mounted huge coolers without a problem. The issue here is quite simple. ASUS doesn't want to admit to not doing enough or possibly any validation for this product. That'd be embarrassing, but owning up to your mistakes often is. It almost seems like with very minimal modification, they slapped on a Strix cooler from a previous model and called it a day. And in a way, they're admitting to exactly that. They're saying they followed the AMD spec, made an almost completely broken product, didn't test it correctly, and then shipped it out to customers. At the very least, they didn't test it mounted horizontally like you would use it in your system, or most of you would use it in your system. And maybe that's the issue. They validate their cards on test benches where this issue won't be discovered. Kind of half joking about that one, or at the very least speculating, but that's about all the respect they deserve when trying to blame a partner for what is very much their screw up. Even after the fix, the ASUS Strix 5700 XT is a very average performing 5700 XT. And really, it should be the best. I feel like ASUS really needs to go back to the drawing board and redesign the way they mount these massive one and a half kilo coolers. It seems as though it's just too difficult to apply enough force with a few small screws while also evenly balancing the heatsink. As it stands with the current design, the bulk of the mounting hardware is off center, and that makes it very difficult to achieve a flush connection with the GPU die. And this ultimately is the problem. The heatsink measures 240 millimeters long, and as I said, it weighs one and a half kilos in total. And yet the bulk of the mounting hardware is applying pressure just 40 millimeters and 95 millimeters into the heatsink, leaving 145 millimeters of metal basically just dangling there. Even the two new VRM screws really fail to apply enough pressure and are much worse than our M.2 solution, which pressed the VRM portion of the heatsink into the thermal pads covering the VRM components very well. This not only ensured maximum contact for the VRM portion, but it also meant the heatsink wasn't levering away from the GPU die. Anyway, it's my opinion that ASUS really has handled this situation quite poorly from start to finish, and it's a shame that we can't just say, Here's how the card performs with the revised screws. Good job sorting out the issue ASUS. Let's just hope that doesn't happen again and move on. But instead they've had to make a terrible written statement on their ROG website. The best course of action, again in my opinion, which I believe would have helped customers restore their faith in ASUS, would have been to simply admit to the mistake, apologize, and then commit to supporting their customers. They did commit to supporting their customers, but that doesn't exactly help restore faith when you take zero responsibility for the mistake you made and then proceed to blame a third party. Again, very poor form from ASUS. At least in a roundabout sort of way, ASUS has admitted, <laughs> inadvertently admitted that the original screws didn't work correctly and they've issued new sets that do get the card working within an acceptable range if, av well, average at best, but hey, it's better than what it was doing and the card won't get progressively hotter over time as the heatsink sags further and further away from the PCB. Of course, it would have been great if it didn't take three months or so to get here and more than a few YouTube videos, but that's the situation we find ourselves in. As always, let me know what you think about this issue. I'll be more than happy to read your comments down below. So yeah, drop your thoughts down there and I'll check it out. And if you'd like to support us directly and become an official Harbour Unboxed member, then check out our Patreon page. Our loyal members really do help us keep these companies honest, or at the very least, a little more honest. As always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.